fucking married. <laughs> I'm Richard. <laughs> Uh, uh, you always fuck me up when you get all excited like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it happens every time, every once in a while. Not every time. Fuck that. That's too much work. Uh, it's Dead Dex, though. Boing. Dead Dex. Yeah, buddy. All right, buddy. Yeah. I think I do too much of anything. Can you? No. <laughs> 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 Well, here we are, doing things again. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if we want to be doing them, but we're, we're going to do it we're anyway. We're going to keep doing For them. you all. Yeah. For you, the fans. Yeah. Oh, was it, we'd say six and a quarter now? We're yeah, six and a quarter. Loyal fans. Loyal fans. Well, what are we going to talk about today? Mm. That's your mouthful of bourbon. We're going to talk about mm, Kickstarter, and uh, more specifically, warning signs on Kickstarter campaigns. And then we yeah. you should be a little suspicious. There, it's been a lot of content done by other creators on the Kickstarter trend lately. It's a known thing that it's going down. We're coming out of the, what was your word used? Mania. Mania, yeah. Uh, yeah, where everybody was, woo, we're going to buy everything. And they're all yeah. going to be worth $1,000 tomorrow. And yep. that shit died real fast. Now it's like, ooh, uh, do we trust Kickstarter at all? I'm not sure I want to buy anything. Yeah, we've 180 from the Mania. We're back into the... What's the, the depre is it depression that you get into on the bipolar stuff? It's mania and depression, I guess. I think so. Yeah, yeah. It's really a depression area of Kickstarter now. So, and I guess maybe all things, maybe collectible to some extent. Yeah, and it's kind of sad. There's a lot of people who, <clears throat> now they're genuine people who actually care about making a game and want to, who missed the boat, and now they're stuck trying to figure out: Do they even bother now? Yeah. What do they do? Because. Eh. Yeah, a year ago, you could have thrown shit at a wall, and it is stuck, and you've gotten a million dollars for it. Uh, yeah. It's not the case anymore, so. No, but I think that shit's over with for a while. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's more out there besides, but I'm, my thought is sorcery was the last one to catch the boat. And by the time all that wrapped up and everything kind yeah. of went on and on a downslide from there so yeah they, it might be a case that if you're that reputable yeah that well known you might still be be okay yeah key forge is uh, on the mm -hmm. comeback from on our new company and they're on a different site called something that i can't remember game found i there think and they seem to be like they're doing really well so if you're well established i think that there's still a market for you yeah 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 if you're not if you're purely a startup dude from your kitchen table you you, you probably missed the boat, man. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to to get the funds to do anything with, and then then you gotta worry about all the, you know, the haters gonna come out, you know, a month after you, the, the pledge is over. Like, where's my shit at? Yeah, fraudster. Yeah. <laughs> then they hound you for the next six to eight months, mm -hmm. every day. Where's my shit? Yep. Well, we we scribbled down some things we think are uh, warning signs potentially. And we did look at some that we that have rolled in the past and that we think are dead, and based it some on that too. So, yeah, it's just a, and it's not not an exhaustive list by any means or anything like that. It's just yeah. things yeah. that we've noticed. Do we look like we do anything exhaustive? <laughs> other than get exhausted waking up in the mornings or walking upstairs, <laughs> tying shoes. Yeah. yeah, just some things we thought of. Uh, you start rattling off the list. Sure. Uh, the, I guess the top of our list would be unfinished art. If there's any mention that the art is not done, maybe it's a red flag. We're not, not going to do the. We're not going to go the. Uh, what's his name? Here's my sign, kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is his fucking name? I forgot. Uh, Jeff Foxworth. Bill Ingball. Oh, Bill Ingball. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bill Ingball. Here's your sign. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we. So there's. I don't mind dropping names. We don't care. Name drop, dude. I don't care. The actual Kickstarters. There's one that's still out there now, lore, that I was watching because I love the aesthetics. But we were doing some research for this video, and I noticed that it said uh, this: uh, the funds they're raising does not include production. It's just for finishing art. Even though you can buy products. You can buy boosters, yeah. They're selling boosters, but not intending to use the money for printing because they haven't done got the art all done. And that may be the biggest red flag there. I'm thinking that deserves to be the first thing we mentioned. That, that's yeah. probably a number one. Uh, if you're it, promising delivery of something and at the very bottom it says, well, this is not for that. <laughs> yeah. This is not for that production. This is for something else. Yeah. Well, They're your sign. telling you, we're going to need more money after this. This yeah. money isn't for that. <clears throat> uh, so, and just the curve you're going to have if, if the art is not done, 
Uh, and they even said they haven't finished setting up their stable of artists. They don't know who's going to be doing the art yet. This is going to be crazy behind. If yeah. it ever fulfills, it won't just be slightly delayed like a lot of them. It's going to be fucked. Yeah. Uh, they're promising, you know, delivering in nine months. <laughs> nine months? You don't even know who the artists are yet? Right. And how you're going to pay for printing? What the fuck? Not including production time, shipping time, uh, delivery time, mm, distribution. Oh, it's, it's a mess. Yeah. Now, on top of that, this was mentioned deep into the the campaign. It wasn't it wasn't mentioned at the top in bold or anything like that. Yeah. I, know. I don't know if we were clear enough at the beginning. I would say we'll talk more about fraudsters later, but warning signs specifically to you may not ever get your product. Yeah. Or if you do, it's going to be insanely delayed and maybe kind of fuckery. Or not what you were expecting to get in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, not necessarily highway robbery, but you, you're not going to... It may not be fulfilled. Uh, now that I saw that looking at this video, I'm probably not going to back that one. Yeah. And I hate that because I love the aesthetic, but I, that's just too scary. I don't trust that. Yeah. So what I mean, yeah, in that situation, what do you do for your second round? I mean, how do you... Where do you yeah, go? I don't know. You're going to sell a future set you haven't made yet? Yeah. You're going to keep being in arrears? Are you going to Ponzi scheme the whole thing? I mean, that's basically what you're doing. That's what, yeah. Oh, we can name drop again. That's what Polywalk's doing. Yeah. I, now i got to go back and try to ask for more money. Yeah. To recoup money that I don't have now. Yeah. Um, yeah, so another one, I think, Harry, this, you thought of this one. Another another potential one is a blatant ripoff. It's, it's, a, it's a red flag. It's it Maybe on its own, it's not crazy, but... Right. Now, the gameplay, mechanics, art, anything is just a pure fucking ripoff. That's a reason to be concerned. And if it goes to the extreme of copyright infringement, that's a that's a big red flag. Yeah. Uh, and the, to me, the obvious example here, and we may get some hate on this, that's fine, is MetaZoo. You know, MetaZoo just kind of snuck under the radar and then blew the fuck up because everything else was blowing the fuck up, especially Flesh and Blood at the time. I think it kind of drove, I mean, money was everywhere and it was sloshing around and it all went crazy there for a while. Yeah. But to me, if you just look at it aesthetically, I'm not talking about mechanics necessarily or anything, but just the just the aesthetics of Mezu looks like Pokemon with red borders. <laughs> Even their hologra holographic foil stuff is the same. It's hollow and the reverse hollow. You know, it's to me it's kind of scary. But you know, they they managed to to get around all that, and now they're an established company and they've got money to deal with. And so it doesn't necessarily apply to them now. But if you're looking at a brand new up and coming game, be a little more suspicious. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know if you want to swap or I'll just keep I'll yeah, some more. If the creator has no experience whatsoever, that's a red flag. When you see these games like Sorcery and other ones that somebody Keyboard who's in... Soul Forge, all those yeah, kind of games. Somebody that's in the game industry. AG. They've got a history. They're going to deliver. You're, yeah. you're going to get product. They're legitimate. They're known. Known entities. They already have been successful in the past at other things. Mm -hmm. Any of these brand new guys, you should be skeptical. And that, you know, that sucks because that's almost all of them. Uh, yeah, but that's that's where your risk reward ratio comes in, which we we haven't even talked about. You know, um, if you like the product and if you're hoping to get it, and you're you're going to take a chance on it, and you don't really care if it's delivered or not, you know, fine. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as you understand going in, going in that you know there's a high probability that you won't get anything. Yeah, uh, that doesn't mean that these guys necessarily are fraudsters. It's just they're going to be way over their head. Uh, and if they don't figure out how to deal with that, then there's a good chance that nothing's going to come out of it. Or Again, severely delayed or uh, underdelivered. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can go back to lore, another one similar to that. It's obvious there's no experience there. The team is being formed. There's no mention of credentials. No one's ever done this before. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a warning sign. I'd say most of this list, except for potentially the unfinished art, would be just one tick mark. If a few of these are checked, yeah. it's, probably, it's probably not a good idea. Yeah. Uh, the creator specifically... Uh, any other ventures they have or any other Kickstarter or any crowdfunding campaigns they've had, uh, it might they might be smart enough that it's not in the same account. Right. I think the Maelstrom guy might have fit in that category. Maybe it was under a different account, the one that he had tried and failed and turned out it was a blatant ripoff or whatever it was. And, but yeah, do your homework. Uh, mm -hmm. Dig these people up. Fuck, look at their LinkedIn if they have one. Yeah. and, and What else have they done? Right. If, if it's in a mania period, that's probably more reason to do so. Because, you know, everybody's just throwing money at everything. All, all at, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, and it's probably the, the time to do the most homework, really. And most won't. And then you end up in the Maelstrom and Polywog situation where now everybody's like, well, where's my shit at? I'm so mad. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> well, yeah. 
That sucks, but you didn't do any homework either, so yeah. Yep. Uh, this one, this is the here's your sign, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> if there's no pictures on the fucking thing, don't back it. Yeah. Almost nobody does. I don't, I don't think that really needs to be said. The ones that are walls of text, I don't, they don't really get supported. Yeah. Or um, if it's, you know, one picture and, you know, one paragraph and give me your money. Yeah. You know. Or if the art looks really rough, which yeah. I've seen, that's a good sign of one of these other indicators. They don't know what they're doing. This isn't yeah. really that fleshed out. Be, be leery. Yeah. If it looks like prototype shit, it is. It's not done. They don't know what they haven't got this thing finished yet. And I, I probably will probably fit in this. I don't remember what their Kickstarter goal was, but if your goal, if your your Kickstarter goal is five thousand dollars to produce a set that has booster boxes and stuff, uh, and you're not some big company and you you know you're just trying more to get it advertising or something, not necessarily need the money. No one's going to produce and distribute anything for five thousand dollars. That's just I mean they 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 don't know what they're doing from the very beginning. Oh, yeah, we didn't put that on the list. No. That should definitely be there. Yeah. Desired total. Yeah, if they're asking for five, ten grand. Now, you know, there are some exceptions to these things, like uh, Chaos and Zooming is one of the indie games I'm into now. And and he asked for that, and he's delivering, because he's yeah. going through different routes. He's doing some print-to-demand stuff and other things. He's not doing a big bulk order at once. Right. Um, but, yeah, if somebody's claiming to be doing some giant push, and they're going to have a big print, and, uh, and their target's five or ten grand... And they're selling, you know, literally hundreds, if not thousands, of booster boxes to be delivered. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, they they may get the the funds to do that, but uh, they don't. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, their campaign makes eight grand. What the fuck are they gonna do with that? Yeah, uh, nothing much really. You, you might get a meeting with somebody that prints cards for that. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna get any printed for that. Yeah, the one thing we talked about on pricing, another indicator would be the the boxes themselves. Uh, we just look at it and see if it makes sense. Like we've seen, um, I'm going to, I'm beating, I'm wind up beating up Lord. I didn't really mean to, but whatever. It's a good live example. And it's got 30 days left as of today. It's just, what are we? Uh, mid September, mid September, yeah. 2022. So it's, um, it's cheap. It's $75 a box. And you got to think, well, the big companies who want to keep their product cheap, who are major players in the industry, they can't hardly make them for cheaper than that. I mean, Magic and Pokemon and Flesh and Blood, you'll never see a box anywhere, well, I mean, decently close to that price, but yeah, they're also printing tens or hundreds of thousands of boxes, too. Hundreds you know, of thousands of boxes. We've not, we've not looked into how much it actually costs to get this shit from somewhere. Uh, certainly, you're not going to get this stuff made in the U.S. for that, and then you start dealing with China, and uh, how are you going to make a box for $75? And, no. Yeah, I don't even know if you can pay for it. If you're doing this small print run, how are you going to even pay for it? Much less have an ROI. Right. And if you're not in to make money, but you have a ton of money, different story. Yeah. Um, you just want your shit out there? Okay. But you know, it needs to be made known up front, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you should definitely advertise that if that's the case. Yeah. I'm rich because of X. Right. I want to do this. So. Uh, but yeah, I'd be much more inclined to trust a more expensive box price, actually, mm -hmm. uh, for that reason. You go up 100 plus, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, 65 $75, I don't know how the fuck you're going to do that. No. Uh, so, uh, in general, one of the things I think that people's mindset is important. Uh, I sound like I know what I'm talking about <laughs> all of a sudden. I fucking don't. should know better than that. We, oh. we don't know what we're talking about. If we haven't said any of this, this does not constitute any kind of advice for anything whatsoever and never will and never should be. <laughs> so let's get that out there. We're, yeah, imagine you have drunken cousins at your table talking. <laughs> That's pretty much how much credibility you should lend us. Yep. Uh, but I, people tend to call these guys who fail and don't deliver the product fraudsters. And I think that's a mistake in your judgment. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so Redefining words, which is part of yeah. the problem we have in society today. It's, it, it, it's not true fraud. Yeah, somebody who says they plan on delivering something and they don't doesn't make them a fraudster. Uh, I, I think, yeah, you're, you're misusing words. And, and, you know, but the fact that someone does a thing doesn't make them the thing. Right. Uh, my stupid example was if you come to my house and try to uh, hurt me, I'm going to kill you. It doesn't make me a murderer. Right. Uh, so, anyway, they, uh, I, people who from day one are intending to take your money, I have to think that that's really, really rare. Yeah, and their shit's going to look really, really good. 
because they want your money and you got to put the effort in to get that. Yeah. You're not going to do it with our example earlier. It's no pictures in a paragraph. You're not going to get, you know, enough money to make it worth your time. Um, it's going to be something that's really slick looking. I think Maelstrom may not quite fit that, but it, I mean, you're quite. getting there. You're getting to that level where it's, there's a lot of effort put into it to make it look good at yeah. least. Oh yeah. That's, that's why I think it's, that's really why this item is important because if you're thinking of it that way, well, I'm looking for people who are fraud me from day one. Well, those are going to be really hard to spot. They're mm -hmm. going to look great. By intention, yeah. Yeah, they're going to put a lot of effort in the design. Mm -hmm. I'd be more inclined to trust a rougher looking one, actually. Right. You still may not get your shit, but you, that's just because it, they're incompetent, which is the most common yeah. situation. Yeah, some of the other flavors of why these things would fail, they have a character flaw. Maybe they're an alcoholic. They're a whatever. They're a fucked up person. they got issues in their life. Something's going on. You're likely not going to be able to find out all that with some research, but it's a reason why these things would fail. Yeah. Uh, and it matters who's making it and what their history is. Yeah. Uh, they could also just be woefully unprepared and ignorant. And just, you know, they have these grand visions and they're not going to be able to pull it off. Mm -hmm. And you might be able to figure that out by just reading it, how they say things. And, uh, but yeah, I'd say that one is much more, much more common. Yeah. That, these people were intending, I mean, there's been some of these guys that have rolled and taken the money that they were, they've been in conventions multiple years. Mm -hmm. They've given out prototype shit. You know, they have a proven track record that you can go see. They've been trying to do this for years. It's not like a quick flip. No. They just didn't know what they were doing. And once, once it came time to deliver, they're like, oh, fuck. And, you know, then fight or flights, you know, sets in. And most of the time it's flight because you don't want to, you don't want to face all the people that, now hate you. Yeah, and there, there's probably some, there might be some legal shit that could happen to you if you just, you waltzed into your Kickstarter campaign and make an update that says, yeah, I'm not giving you all this shit. Right. Uh, I was stupid and I was wrong and I'm not going to be able to afford this now. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that they're going to say that. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and kind of another degree of a fraudster. Instead of fraudster, they might just be financially responsible. They didn't mean to do it. Mm -hmm. They just mismanaged the funds. I think where it's probably why probably lands somewhere in that in that realm. Uh, I think he thought he had more money than he needed to do because he printed some promo sets and stuff. Though he did sell those, you know, it wasn't like he was using money from Kickstarter specifically, though that possibly could have been done as well. But uh, so there are products out there for Polywog, just not what he promised to deliver us through the Kickstarter. And now that's you know borderline not going to happen because he's trying to now. <laughs> raise funds from yeah. investors to complete that so eh. yeah uh, so that doesn't sound like a fraudster no uh, just so a combination like... of incompetence and financially irresponsible yeah and a lot of these i think would be a combination of those you know not necessarily one just one checkbox probably gonna have a few yeah now the all out fraudster that's a different story but they're probably a psychopath, and they've planned this for a long time anyway. Yeah, and I don't know. Somebody might know an example. I don't know an example. I don't know off offhand either. Or somebody figured out that this person had never actually done anything, and it was all smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that. No. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, in closing, and fuck, we were, in, we're talking forever. Yes, we have. We've Jesus rambled for Christ. a long time, so... The point three of you all that are left, we appreciate you staying this long. <laughs> I don't know why you care yeah. about our opinion this much, but you probably don't. Really. We'll, we'll close this thing down. Yeah. Failing on a on a campaign, a crowdfunding, and not delivering doesn't make you a fraudster. Uh, and again, it's not defending anybody. That's just what you need to be looking for. It's something mm -hmm. to have in your mind. You're not necessarily looking for a fraudster. You're looking for competence. Yeah, and, and a lot of this actually falls back on people backing stuff too. You know, do your fucking homework on shit. If you have a low risk appetite, then don't be backing and just random shit, you know, closing your eyes and throwing some, a dart at something. You know, do research and, you know, it, it still may not work out for you, but that's that's the whole, that's part of this whole Kickstarter thing anyway. There's, there's actually risk involved. And I think people take that out for whatever reason. They just think that they're going to, they're entitled to get whatever they back. And you, yeah, you probably should, but that's not the reason why these even exist. No. If that was the case, they would just, you know, they wouldn't need you to begin with and it would be in the stores or online somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's really the biggest takeaway. Our stance is you, you're looking for competency. Um, that's, that's what you're looking for. You're not looking for a fraudster. Yeah. You're looking at it wrong if you're thinking, oh, these guys are going to fraud me. 
Yeah. No, they just might be dumbasses. Yeah. They might not be able to do what they said they're going to do. Right. Um, and if they if they don't if it doesn't look like they've done the shit they can do for free, you should definitely be scared. Mm-hmm. Uh, prototype design and having fleshed out mechanics and knowing it, cards in the set and all. that can all be done before you ever start a Kickstarter. Yeah, you don't need money for that. Nope. Uh, and I, you know, even when the art's not done, it's just uh, yeah. if you you've got to pay to even try to land an artist. Yeah. I don't know about that. I mean, that's going to cut out a lot of your really indie kitchen table guys. Yep. Because they're not going to be able to afford the art. But All right. Mm, yeah, that's a scary one. All right. Well, shit. Almost 20 minutes. We are 20 minutes in. What the fuck have we done? I have no idea. <laughs> is that good enough then or something? Yeah, buddy. Fuck, I guess it is. <laughs>